for this opportunity to share a little of my story today uh, and I want to thank the pastor for praying with me yesterday I know she couldn't be here today but she she and I prayed yesterday and I just want to thank her I know she's listening and watching right now so I love you let us pray God I come to you this morning with a grateful heart thanking you for your blessings and your mercy I magnify you Lord dear God I ask that you be with me during this time as I stand here in this sacred area I pray that my words would be a comfort and blessing to someone listening today. It has been a cathartic experience for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I have to say, I was a little nervous and intimidated being up here. I don't know how the pastors and ministers do it. <laughs> it is not easy. The preparation, everything. <laughs> Uh, but, I, <laughs> not easy. but I must confess, preparing for today has truly been a blessing. It gave me an opportunity to spend more time with the Bible. There's so much I have to learn. But what is clear is that the stories in the Bible reflect our lives. Things haven't changed. The trials and tribulations that people are going through in the Bible are the same that we go through today. So I encourage you to study. Go to Sunday school, Bible study, or just read. I enjoy studying because it allows me to ask questions and challenge. That's how I learn. That's how we all learn. I didn't do this alone. I reached out for help for my message today. So thank you to everyone who helped me prepare and everyone who has been praying for me and up until this point. I really do thank you all. I love you, Mom and Gail, my sisters. Quiet, please. God is speaking. My name is Valda Chauncey, and I have been a member of Pleasant Grove Church for almost five years, since 2018. I have had a rewarding career at Janssen, which is the neuroscience division of Johnson & Johnson, for almost 29 years. My customers are physicians and nurses and healthcare professionals who treat and take care of people living with serious mental illness. So rewarding to work with people who take the time and treat people who are living with such a devastating illness. Over the past few years, as I get closer to the end of my career, I have been wondering what my journey has been all about and what my next journey will be. I have been, really been thinking a lot about what I will say today. I often have conversations with God, but after Pastor Classy asked me to speak, my conversations increased. <laughs> but I wasn't hearing God's voice. The story of Elijah fascinating to me. Elijah was a powerful prophet. Some might argue he was the most important prophet. God performed a lot of miracles through Elijah. One of the miracles will be talked about in 1 Kings, that he was able to stop the rain for three and a half years. 
Wow, it's amazing. To cause a drought for three and a half years, it's unbelievable. She resurrected a widow's son. Wow, he's amazing. But as powerful and as important Elijah was, he still had trouble, he had doubts. He still had trouble hearing God's word. Can you believe that? I just think about we all beat ourselves up when we think we don't hear from God. Elijah doubted himself just like I do, just like we all do. We are all guilty of not hearing what God is saying. When the Israelites had rejected God's covenant and were about to kill Elijah, the Lord God Elijah told uh, uh, the Lord God told Elijah to go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. A great and powerful wind tore, shadowed the rocks, came in, but the Lord wasn't there. Then after the, the wind, this earthquake came, but still the Lord wasn't there. And after the earthquake came a fire, and still the Lord was not there. Sometimes when we are expecting God to speak to us in this huge, big voice and shout it out to us, we actually sometimes we're listening to the pastor and we expect him to just shout it out. We, we, we expect this megaphone to just shout out the message and just let us hear it that way. But sometimes if we do that, if we were looking for something big, we will miss him. We will miss him. Sometimes it comes in a gentle whisper. It was Elijah's relationship with God was his biggest miracle. One day I was driving to see one of my customers. I drive about an hour to an hour and a half every day to see my customers. And I enjoy listening to audio books and audio programs during my long drive. And, and frankly, on this particular day, I was hoping one of the message would come through on some program, audio book. <laughs> so, um, but I decided to turn off the noise, turn off the distractions, and just be quiet. Um, so I turned it all off, and I just listened, and listened to hear God's word. When I arrived at my customer's office, I walked in, and um, I walked into her office, and the first thing I saw was the sign that said, teach people how to treat you. I said, hmm. I Googled that quote later that day, and it was from a motivational speaker, Tony Gaskins, and it went on to say, you teach people how to treat you by what you allow, what you stop, and what you reinforce. That quote resonated with me. It seemed to sum up my journey in a nutshell. <laughs> Early in my career, I would not speak up when things were unfair or unjust. I would let, overlook microaggressions and just let things go. Then I started to speak up. It was around the time that I started speak, listening more to God that my strength came, and I was able to reinforce that strength through mentorship. Mentorship is the influence, guidance, or direction given by a mentor, an experienced and trusted advisor. A mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. That was a quote from Oprah Winfrey. My mentor in my head. <laughs> uh, uh, our, our youth need positive mentors in their life during these challenging times. Quiet, please. God is speaking. Early in my career, I had success fast. I started in sales after only a few years, I was promoted to the home office in marketing, but it wasn't easy. There were not a lot of people in the home office in management, in, in management positions that looked like me, black and female. I had a few mentors, but I lacked a lot of guidance and mentors at work. My career started to stagnate. There was no one there invested in me or rooting for me. I seemed to be on my own. One of my few mentors said to me one day, you have to reach out and ask people to be your mentor. I took her advice, but it was uncomfortable for me. It really means a lot to people when you trust and respect them enough to ask them to be your mentor. When you are asked, you should be intentional. It is a huge responsibility. I want to take the experiences I have had over the year to help younger people so that hopefully they are more prepared and maybe not have the same, have experienced the same challenges I did. You need to be prepared to invest in another person who is depending on you for guidance. After three years at the corporate office, I accepted a field manager role. This is what brought me to North Carolina, so I thought. Elijah's commitment to God challenges us. He spoke God's word to a king who often rejected him. 
to pay the price for carrying out the ministry of God alone. Ironically, my challenges began after I started getting promoted. Much like Elijah, when I started speaking out, I felt alone. Around my 20th year with J&J, I started noticing there were still few black women and men in leadership roles. Nothing changed after all these years. As I approached my 25th year, this was around the time I joined CGC. I was asked what I wanted to do in church and how I wanted to be of service because we all know pastor will put you to work right away. And if you don't know what you want to do, she'll find out. She'll tell you. <laughs> I remember saying that I, my interest was mentoring young people, but I did not know how that would manifest itself in church. I started new member classes. As a part of the new member class, you learn your spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31 says, Paul encourages Christians to eagerly desire the greater gifts. We should pray, each pray and ask God to give us spiritual gifts so we can use them for the greater good. Leadership, wisdom, faith, and giving are my spiritual gifts. I began seeking ways to use my gifts. One day after a Sunday service, uh, Dr. Lachelle Wilborn spoke about the Dream Academy and made an appeal to, for others to volunteer. For those of you who don't know, the Dream Academy is an enrichment program providing students in grades 4 through 12 an opportunity to identify, cultivate, and de develop and realize their dreams. Our mission is to prepare students for successful competition in the global market through strategic programs and life experiences. This was an opportunity to utilize all the skills and experiences I had gained throughout my career to help our youth and provide kids with the guidance I lacked early in my career. This is what I was called to do. Although I had mentors early in my career, it wasn't consistent. I believe to truly mentor, you have to be intentional about investing in another person. There was an opportunity to use my, this was an opportunity to use my spiritual gifts of wisdom and leadership for good. I have to share a funny story. When I started working with the Dream Academy during one of the early sessions, um, I was, um, had the opportunity to read to a young dreamer, and I was reading with the dreamer and reading to the dreamer. And unbeknownst to me, Dr. Lachelle was observing me at this time. <laughs> and soon after that, she said, you should work with the younger children. And I said, no, no way. I don't have children. I, I'm not a teacher. I don't want to work with the younger, I don't think I should work with the younger children. I should be with the older children, more mature, closer to my age. I said closer, not close, closer to my age. <laughs> so, so I, that. I resisted. Um, but she went on and she um, said, no, I, I think that's where you should be. And she was right and I was wrong. <laughs> I also uh, had the honor of also um, teach, of teaching the five to eight year olds Bible Institute. Um, Sunday school class as well. I love working with young kids because they are still open to learn and need and desire guidance. I learn a lot from them too. I see myself in them. As with Elijah, God has work for us to do even when we feel fear and failure. During the next few years after joining CGC, one of my spiritual gifts was put to the test, my faith. I had now been at my company over 25 years, and the enemy was testing me in ways that almost broke me. At almost 30 years, I still don't see a lot of women of color holding leadership roles in my company, and that's the same everywhere. In 2020, after George Floyd's murder and the racial reckoning that happened afterwards, many companies felt compelled to take a look in the mirror. Companies started taking a, look, a closer look at their percentages of blacks in leadership roles. Our company was one. We began having national conference calls with senior black leadership, and they shared their experiences as a black person living in America. They encouraged everyone to have the same discussions on the local level with their teams, and we did. It was comforting to hear the few black, senior black leaders experienced the same, had the same experiences, experiences we all did. When I had the opportunity, along with two of my other black colleagues, to share my story on a separate call, I felt this relief that someone was finally listening. I remember one time sharing with my manager at the time about my work with the Dream Academy, and I was so passionate because everyone who knows me, I love talking about the Dream Academy, and I got really passionate when I'm talking about it. 
So she, she heard that passion in my voice. And what's interesting what she said, does helping kids that look like you help ease the pain of what you went through? In some ways it did, but it was more than that. We can't go back in time and make up for what happened, but we can do our part to ensure our next generation has an easier time. Our com company became more intentional about increasing the percentage of blacks in management. We brought in more African Americans to hold entry level positions, and I was fortunate to mentor one of them. Our company officially started a mentorship program this year and brought on more representatives. I was praised for the work that I had done, and I was assigned to mentor a new representative this year. One of the joys of my life is my work with the Dream Academy. It has been a labor of love for almost five years. Mentoring is an important part of the Dream Academy, but, it, but the Dream Academy is so much more. There is truly something so rewarding about giving back to youth and being a part of their growth and their future. I was on a call the other day for, a mentors, for the mentorship program at work, and someone made a profound statement that I want to share. She, she had a conversation that she had with someone she was mentoring, and she asked him, you know, what is your career goal? And he said, I want to, want to be vice president. I want to be VP of a company. I don't care what company, I just want the title. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite interesting. So she said, that's great, but remember, it's about aspiring to the work you want to do, not a title. There's nothing wrong with being a vice president or president if that's what you want. Aspire to do what you want, not to a title. I wish someone had told me that early in my career. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have listened so much. <laughs> um, I work with the leadership team, the Pleasant Grove Foundation's Dream Academy, leadership team and board of accomplished people who show me that I do have a voice. It is so gratifying to be in the presence of people that look like you, who challenge, inspire, and want to see you succeed. Representation matters because it allows you to feel validated and express yourself comfortably and feel valued. When you start out with that foundation, you pr are prepared for anything. That is what I want to instill in our dreamers and the representatives that I mentor at work. God commanded Elijah and he was obedient to God. If we have faith like Elijah, whatever God commands us to do, he will provide the resources. God will guide your every step and give you what you need. When I moved to North Carolina 20 years ago, I thought it was for my career. All the promotions, Numerous roles, the successes, the defeats, were all to prepare me for where I am now. My final words, please take a moment, and like Elijah, listen humbly and quietly for God's guidance.